Hi, friends. Welcome to another brush video, fam. Working again with Fude Beauty, presenting Tonsedo, a brand I introduced last year in October, and they are working on a collaboration with Tonsedo. So just to highlight the brand further, I have six brushes per my request that Fude Beauty was so generous to send that I cannot wait to share about. And my links down below are affiliated, so your consideration is always appreciated. If you want to use it, great. If you don't want to shop with them, that's great too. I'll also link my Tonsedo video down below from October if you want to take a look at those brushes, but I'm excited for this lineup because it also includes Red Squirrel, which I mean, luxury times a thousand, but we have it in both an eyeshadow brush and a cheek brush, which I'm excited to present. But let's begin with the brush details and demos, shall we? Let's begin with the YGQ17 liquid foundation brush made with goat hair, specifically Ototsu goat hair. This is more of a makeup artist inspired foundation brush, and it caught my eye because it's not as dense as most other foundation brushes that I have from other Food Aid brands. When you look at the spectrum of makeup application, especially from makeup artists to influencer makeup, influencer makeup tends to be a little more heavy handed with using beauty sponges and even with a foundation brush, like those super dense types of brushes, flathead ones that you just pounce a bunch of foundation on your skin. With the YGQ17, you just have more of a lightweight application that I feel floats the foundation on your skin. And here I use it with the House Labs foundation, which I think an appropriate texture to use with this Tonsedo liquid foundation brush. I made sure to apply it on the back of my hand first to warm it up, then dotted the product on my face, went in with the brush afterwards. I think the foundation would have overwhelmed the bristles, which is why I thought it appropriate to apply the foundation on my skin first. And the brush has this feather light manner in which it applies the foundation, and I think it ideal for for those who are not looking for heavy coverage finishes, more skin-like and natural in finish, which I think, again, aligns more with the makeup artist approach to foundation application and why this brush is phenomenal for that purpose. It is undyed, so you can use it with liquid, as you see here, and it gets the foundation on fast. There is a little bit of shedding, so do make sure that you clean the brush first so you can get rid of the stray hairs from the ferrule, but a great design overall if you don't like dense foundation brushes, if you're not crazy about makeup sponges, again, just this lightweight quality with the brush paints the foundation on. And I think a lovely experience to see the foundation sink into your skin and not look like it's covering it. So that's why I think this brush is a great go-to if you're looking for more of, again, that lightweight natural skin finish from your foundation. Next, we have the AQ20 cheek brush. This is the most expensive brush out of the bunch. I won't mention the price. You will see the price when you click on the link. This is the Red Squirrel round flat brush and I had presented a red squirrel brush in my holy grail brush picks. I will make sure to link that video down below as well so you can take a look. I wanted a red squirrel brush in this cheek size because I think versatility exists beyond. You can use it for cheek products but you could also use it to apply loose powder which I do feel red squirrel has an advantage over goat and even a little bit over gray or blue squirrel. Yes, I said it. Silkiness factor of red squirrel is un- Apparel. It's something that you have to experience yourself, to feel for yourself, just the capacity of this brush. Again, despite how soft it is, how lovingly it lays down powder products, it's exquisite. So I was particularly excited here in this demo shop because it was the first time I was dipping into the Hourglass Palette 2 curation with the deeper copper shades in here. And I had wanted to use the Red Squirrel brush because seeing how the setting powder was a lot more deep than my skin tone, I thought using a lighter brush would pick up the right amount and did it. The way this brush deposits blush I mean, in a feather-like, just angel wing manner is outstanding. And the lay down, perfect. I think great for those who 
wish to have more of like that lightweight application of blush or any cheek product for that matter. If you want it to be blush or bronzer or even highlight, maybe a blush topper texture that you want it to look lightweight on the cheeks and not heavy, shimmery, overly metallic on the cheeks, the Red Squirrel Brush is going to deliver those results, not only with cheek products, but with loose powder, even for finishing, which is why I adore this size and shape. Given the price for this brush, you don't have to limit it to just cheek tasks. You can also use it to apply your loose powder. And because the ferrule is pinched here, the brush can easily fit around smaller regions of your face, maneuver around it easily, especially compared to the E33. This is a much bigger paddle brush, right? It's going to cover more surface area, but it's not going to be as precise. However, with the smaller red squirrel brush here, you could hit the cheeks, but you could also hit under the lash line. If you forgot, let's say, a smaller brush for setting your concealer, you got it here with the red squirrel brush down through the brows, around the brows, and it won't disturb your makeup because again, it's so beautifully soft. And as you saw in the demo, I applied the other cheek products from the palette. The way it was able to handle the more shimmery finish from the Hourglass powders, how it was able to distribute that texture evenly across my cheeks, how it didn't look uneven. It just kind of had that beautiful buffed sheen. Again, I think from the Red Squirrel, it was just exquisite. And I am so happy that I requested this brush because it went beyond my expectations since, again, I had experienced Red Squirrel from a much bigger brush, maybe limited by its size, but now to have this in the AQ20, my goodness, I, it's the only brush I would need. Now, keep in mind, again, since it is lighter in product pickup and application, if you like to heavy dose it up with blush and bronzer, if you just want more coverage, then the AQ12 won't be your brush and you will be spending money on something that you won't like or even use. So definitely goat hair will be your bet if you wanted more coverage, more color distribution. If, however, you already love gray blue squirrel and you want some softer than that, you want an application of makeup that is just so natural and my goodness, looks like your skin, like it imbues from within, AQ12. Next up, we have the YSS14 highlighter brush. Despite how much I love the AQ12, the YSS14 is, mm. the angle on this brush, listen, when it comes to applying blush with this type of an angled brush and the longer handle too, you just have the tendency to kind of like swirl and twirl to your heart's content. But this could also come in a shorter handle format. I have here the YS14T highlighter brush, the Sokoho dyed goat hair brush that has a similar angle, but this is blue squirrel. And I think having the angle in blue squirrel just makes it incredibly versatile. So perhaps not as versatile as the AQ12 since it is a bigger brush head, this is going to be a little more precise. And I applied the deeper setting powder from the Hourglass palette here into the hollows because I thought the shape just fits lovely into the hollows here. And the fact that you can place a good amount of color despite it being squirrel hair, the way it could buff the color around that region easily, I think is superb. And especially because the brush head itself is small, the color won't travel too far high or down. So you have control there, but it is fantastic for blush. As you could imagine, the way it splays on the face is not too dense and it floats the color on perfectly without disturbing the makeup underneath. And I adore this for highlighter application. The flat edge of the angle, you could get product right where you need it and it places the highlighter perfectly here on the cheekbones, which I have been gravitating towards over smaller brushes. I know the teardrop brush was the go-to for many people in applying highlighter on their cheekbones, but there's something about applying highlighter with a flatter surface where I feel it can envelop a little more highlight and it just leave behind a more natural trail where when you turn your head and you see the reflection, it doesn't just stop here. I feel like highlight could begin on the brow bone and travel as far as down as the top of your cheeks. And I feel this brush size and design 
uh, perfectly aligns with that placement. So that's why I've been gravitating towards the YSS 14 for highlighter as well as bronzer and blush. But my goodness, this is superb and you can use it for finishing it's a little small for finishing 100 however if you just wanted to finish your cheek region and not necessarily the rest of your face or or you could use this for under eyes as well i was using the heck out of the wh14 when i first received it back in october as well as the ws14 t because again the slant makes it perfectly easy to get under the eyes this is a little softer it's not as tightly packed as the tea dyed brush so it has more of a lightweight consistency more of like a, a float if you will i don't know it's all about the float in this video with tonsido brushes nice light application of powder if you didn't want to overwhelm the skin there which you will experience from the yss14 again it is gray squirrel i just wanted to confirm <sighs> Oh my gosh, the tips are just so fine. They're left intact and you can feel that for yourself when you use this brush. So as much as I love the AQ12, I think the YSS14, the shape is just beautifully unique. And to have a shape with gray squirrel, I think that's that, that was the kicker for me. Now into the eyeshadow brushes. This one is unique. The YHW12 made, I believe, with Sokoho Goat. And I wanted an angled eyeshadow brush like this because I don't have anything of this size that's angled in such a manner. So I use the powders from the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette since the powders there are pretty soft and easy to pick up with. And I thought this was great to throw through my crease and on the mobile lid if i just wanted one and done looks because the brush itself the bristles are long it's not going to have that much of a pickup as opposed to a brush with a shorter bristle length so keep that in mind and also know that you will use this with shadows that are not pigments right they're actual eye shadows that have more of a natural finish i'm thinking viziar suku even the mattes found in byrito's flora karahari palette or even the prismic palette i believe that's what it was called so this is going to leave behind more of a lightweight finish of eyeshadow this is not going to be your melt cosmetics brush to go to okay and i think the angle just makes it perfectly easy to sweep color through your crease in a manner that might not require you to blend and swirl and twirl. If you were to use a more traditional dome brush for your crease color application, I could understand the tendency to go in with the swirling and twirling, but because this brush already has that angle, you can fit it here into your crease. Even if you have smaller eyes, using the surface of the brush to place color here on the lid and just sweep it past your lash line to create that soft soft wing look. Then I went in with the YQ12 T brush that is made with Psychoho goat hair T dyed. This has a little bit of a more robust pickup because it's a shorter bristle flat on both sides. Great to place a darker color on your outer lash line if you want a little bit of a more robust serving of shadow there and great if you wanted some color across the lid. Now this is still a pretty soft brush. The bristles are long. If you want it more of a stronger pickup let's say from a shimmer texture i believe i use the yq12 2 with one of the metallic formulas in the etherealized makeup palette and the metallic is a little tight in the pan but this brush was able to pick it up well however the application was more sheen like in finish if i wanted more coverage then i will have to go in with my finger but if you're thinking like for instance, if you have a Suku Quad or a softer metallic formula, then this brush will be great. It will just lay down the color perfectly in a manner which I don't think will accentuate lid texture, which I think many people encounter, especially with formulas that are super high shine metallic, but they tend to be a little too tight and creamy because the creamier it is, then the more it's going to latch on to texture wise, whether something that's softer and this brush is perfect for those textures will lay down more of a natural finish and will have more of a blurring effect if you are experiencing any lid texture issues. And my apologies, I kept on calling the cheek brush AQ12. This is AQ20. This is the AQ12. Yes, I wanted to feel what it was like to use a red squirrel 
eyeshadow brush. I experienced the pleasure of feeling Red Squirrel as a face or cheek brush, but to have it as an eyeshadow brush. And my suspicions were correct because it is so soft. Look how elastic and flexible it is on the skin, which is an indication that it won't pick up those tighter textures in the pan. I, you know, what comes to mind like tighter metallic textures, maybe in a melt palette or another indie type of brand palette, maybe even in a Tasha palette, right? That those metallics or pat even just, they got a little too much in there, right? A little bit of a softer texture, like what I used here in Ethereal Eyes, the topper shades that have more of like a powdery finish. And I thought the AQ12 was perfect for that formula. It allowed the sparkle textures just to be placed on the eye. If you have sensitive eyes and gray squirrel still wasn't soft enough, it's expensive. The red squirrel eyeshadow brush is expensive. However, the silkiness and softness, I have, I mean, it's crazy. The color just places beautifully on the lid. And because again, of its insane flexibility and fluidity, the way it just carves through the regions of your eye, you could take color here through the lower lash line, tap here on the outer lid, place color here through the crease. And it's just so silky. And I know some of us have experience with a few brushes that when you go back and forth, the skin goes back and forth as well. And that could cause issues where the finished blend looks uneven and skipped. The Red Squirrel is not gonna move your skin. If it does, then it ain't Red Squirrel. You could apply a little more pressure, but you don't have to. The way it carries color across the eyes, again, in this watercolor manner, just natural and finish, it is beautiful and everything from how the brush feels to how it applies product and allow me to make this brief comparison between the goat hair brush you have a little more feedback here than you do from the red squirrel brush so that really all depends on your preference right softer is not necessarily better if you prefer more pickup a more robust blend from your bristle type right those are considerations you have to make. So when you see the price and you see how high it is, like, well, this has to be a better brush. Again, not necessarily. Context is important. The makeup that you have, the techniques you prefer, the type of skin that you have, skin sensitivity. Maybe you have to use a softer brush because of eye irritation issues. Maybe your preference is that you don't like a ton of eye makeup, so you need a brush to not pick up as much, right? Because we are in the space, you know, oh my god the pigment can we leave that in 2022 i thought we did but apparently we didn't anyway we don't necessarily want all the color on our eyes eyes or cheeks for that matter so to have a brush that controls that application and you have the dial in your hands to choose the intensity because you already start from a natural place in terms of the finish and to have something like the aq12 to have color on your lids that's just barely there, just right to give you enough sculpt and shading. Sophisticated, okay? So those are the six selects that I chose from Tonsedo. And again, Fude Beauty was generous to send. I hope this kind of broadened your knowledge about Tonsedo in addition to the first video I did last year in October, again, with their face brushes and a lot of their angled brushes, which what I automatically think of when I think Tonsedo, I think this shape immediately. And they also have eye sets with different shader sizes. This is the bigger shader size and the YKQ12, the Kalinsky brush, cream liquid powder, the resiliency of Kalinsky and the fact that it's so soft still. Oh my gosh, this one's expensive too. Just wanna let you know. So across the board, you can see just the, the versatility in the brand in you choosing different bristle types, right? From goat all the way through red squirrel, the brush sizes, different tasks for the different brush head sizes, the handle lengths too. I think great that you have an option to go shorter, medium, or longer depending on if you're a professional or just a makeup enthusiast that i think gives the user room to truly customize their makeup experience and that they have the tools for specific tasks and techniques that can be covered 
well. And I know from using Goat, Squirrel, Blue and Red, and Kalinsky, now I have a, a much broader idea of what brush is best to use with what eyeshadow formula or cheek blush formula. And again, that just results in better makeup because you've experienced it all, you've applied it all, you realize that not all brushes are made for all products and for your skin. So perhaps if you were eyeing Tonsedo, if it kind of compelled you to check out the brand further, hopefully this video kind of spurred that interest and you can check them out on Fude Beauty. Again, all my links are affiliated. If you just want to see the brush without using my link, I'll make sure to also include the brush names and numbers correctly. I know because I messed that up in the video, but I will mess it up in the description box, I promise. I'll also include my Fude Beauty playlist if you want to check out other Fude brands. Let me know what you have your eye on from Tonsido. I would love to know if you have any Tonsido brushes currently in your collection. I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Ude Beauty Extravaganza, or my favorite foundation brushes from all the Fude brands. Take care, and I will see you again soon.